Welcome back to Thoughtology. This is your 26th lesson. I am here with my friends Sorel, Tanya, and Jessica today. They are, uh, I have two nurse practitioners and a medical esthetician here to answer all of your questions about skincare and a whole bunch of other crap that we're probably going to talk about that's going to help you. So, um, where do you guys work? Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Sorel Cooper. I'm one of the advanced medical uh, injectors at of me in Bethesda. She injects me. No big deal. <laughs> and then you go, go ahead. I'm Jessica. I'm the medical esthetician at of me as well. So I do all the facials, advice on skincare, mm -hmm. tea it up for everyone's injections and such as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm Tanya. I'm also a nurse practitioner of me. Um, and I'm also one of the aesthetic injectors. And um, Sarah and I also do all the laser services. Yeah, they do. They lasered me yesterday. Okay, so um, I actually had a lot of girls come forward and say, hey, Mariah, would you do a skincare episode? Which is crazy because I don't think I know that much about taking care of my skin. I kind of leave that to you guys. So um, I said, yeah, absolutely, we should do that. And I kind of want to get into what you guys, I mean... What do you think are the common mistakes that girls are making these days with skincare? Obviously, they're not wearing enough SPF and stuff like that. So I'm going to just let you guys kind of, what, what do they need to know? All right. So they don't look like they're 45 when they're 25. So one common mistake is that what a skincare routine that anyone else is doing is irrelevant to them. So just because someone else has good skin and that's their routine, it might do like diddly squat for them or it could F them up as mm -hmm. well. Um, just because if someone has a certain condition that they're treating or they have very tolerant skin, you could do something that's too strong or too stripping for you that could not give you the, the same results. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you touched on SPF. Everyone should be wearing SPF every day, whether they're inside or outside. It makes me sound crazy originally, but you need to be on SPF, especially if you're going to do any advanced treatments like chemical peels. Like I just won't do a treatment on you unless you mm -hmm. have SPF in your routine. You'll get initial results. But then it'll backfire. You'll have nothing but pigment. If I give you fresh new baby skin that looks amazing, mm -hmm. and you don't protect it afterwards. I've I've heard that girls are doing. I don't. I, don't, I feel like I'm gonna sound stupid, but you know whatever. It, that's not that happens every day. Um, an AHA pill peel, right, or yeah. something like that. Like I think girls on TikTok have been doing like these peels, and then they're like messing their skin up because they're peeling their face at home. And then they're not wearing the proper SPF mm -hmm. and stuff when they go outside. So they're probably actually doing way more damage than helping their skin because they're taking off a barrier and then burning the layer that was underneath that exactly. already damaged skin. Yeah. yeah. So that can definitely happen. And then also they're using products that aren't very elegantly formulated. Exfoliating and burning your face is easy. Like you just mm -hmm. need something very acidic. And if they just use something that costs like 2 or $3 on Amazon, it's not going to do it elegantly or efficiently. It's It'll just going to yeah, be harsh and very caustic okay. for their skin. So long-term benefits, not great. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to ask coconut oil on the skin. I don't do it, but I see girls do it all the fucking time. Please explain to them why they shouldn't be doing that. Stop fucking doing that. <laughs> Stop. I'm, I'm talking to you. I know you're driving. I don't know where you're going. Fucking TJ Maxx, Starbucks, whatever with your best friend. And I know you saw a fucking TikTok and you thought, uh huh. Yeah, well, no, stop. It clogs your pores and I don't even do skin for a living. And I know that stop fucking doing it. All right, go ahead. Very true. Oil in general, very tricky. Oil in general, you should probably stay away from. If you remember in science class, without being too boring, oil has very fatty, fat molecules. Like, they're huge. They don't go into the skin. They just sit on top. So they're going to clog your pores. They're not going to moisturize because they're just going to sit on top and suffocate your pores. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people think coconut oil can be cleansing because it has boric acid in it but not nearly enough to really have any benefit. And again, it's just suffocating it. It's not delivering anything. Well, and here's the thing too. If a girl who doesn't have acne goes, oh, well, I take my makeup off with coconut oil. Okay, well, you don't have acne. If somebody with acne takes their makeup off with coconut oil, like, I mean, I'm not, like, I just don't put it on my face at all, mm -hmm. but I feel like these girls don't understand. It goes back to like what you said. It depends on what kind of skin you have, because if you have pores that easily get clogged, why would you stick something I've had that girl. I've had the most juiciest, amazing extractions on this girl that would not give up her coconut oil. And I just told her, I was like, 
no one has this many blackheads right next to their ear or like these mm -hmm. areas that you don't normally have like a high oil flow like you are clogging your own pores no this i'm not i saw doing. this girl on tiktok no stop no, you're, no, you're if you think about it coconut oil is solid yeah. Yeah. Sure, right so like why would so you just like that? sebum mm -hmm. so okay i know what sebum is but we gotta explain because i've tried i've tried to tell my girlfriends before i'm like you know what sebum is right now like no what is that and i'm just like okay okay so you want me to jump in? Yeah, because sebum. coconut oil is it it literally is solid just like sebum. Like when yeah. you're so sebum is your natural oil content. That's what comes out of like where you're a little bit more porous. You have what's called an acid mantle on the top layer of your skin. It's a thin layer of oil and water, just like a little vinaigrette. It's an acid bath for bacteria, basically. We are acidic animals and we have to keep that in balance. So when you're over exfoliating, using these ridiculous I'm gonna say the ordinary exfoliants, you're gonna burn your face off and you're gonna disrupt that acid mantle. That's why you get red, that's why you get irritated, that's why you get all those little red bumps after you do it for too long mm -hmm. because you just effed up your acid mantle. Mm -hmm. And now we have to slowly build it back and no one has the patience for that anymore, but that's really what I try to coach mm -hmm. people through now. Okay, so like what about like astringents and things like that that you get at like Target, right? I saw your face. <laughs> I saw Cyril's face. Don't do the witch hazel. <laughs> really? Do. See, I Don't didn't even know that, so why? It's it's too stripping for the skin really? and very acidic. So our pH balance is around like a 4.5 to a 5.5. That's our mm -hmm. skin, that's the human skin. Mm -hmm. If you go too acidic, again, you just throw that off balance. and naturally our skin can rebalance pretty well but it's just it's not doing benefits worth investing into really so say you know why the, i mean whenever i've used like an astringent or whatever mm -hmm. right i'm gonna put myself out there i use that, the blue stuff you know what i mean when i feel like my skin's really dirty i know i shouldn't do it how do i get a deep clean on my face so i feel like my face is genuinely clean mm -hmm. without using something like that so you can use toners that are a little bit more formulated for skin and gentle but having a proper cleansing routine a double cleanse full 60 seconds when you're cleansing not just like rubbing your face mm -hmm. really quick and then like scrubbing it off with a washcloth like a good proper cleanse and then as well as having a good proper exfoliating routine that's good for your skin type so for you that's the glow pads mm -hmm. that, me that really are helpful mm -hmm. to help with counteracting oiliness blackheads and some mm -hmm. of like what those concerns would be all right and then i have this question washcloth or no washcloth for that, your face it's so faux pas so mechanical exfoliants which would be washcloth mm -hmm. even though it's more gentle or scrubbing in general it really depends on the skin type mm -hmm. there are skins that are tough enough to withstand that and may even benefit from a little mechanical exfoliating even like dare i say scrubs but if you have sensitive skin dry skin acneic skin any of those things redness yeah, no mechanical, really? no washcloth, no scrub. See guys, look, you're learning, I'm learning. How great is this? Um, <laughs> okay, so, yeah, because, you know, people are always like, oh, Mariah, like, look at this glow you have. I'm like, that's rosacea, first of all. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm trying to get rid of it, all right? Rosacea My best friend. Be cute, though. Sometimes, but it's it's at the cute level right now, yeah. but I know it very easily could get to the not cute mm -hmm. level, you know? And my friend's just like, oh, look at your glow. I'm like, that's not my glow. That's my rosacea, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's not talk about it. Um, But, you know, redness is like a, what is it, like a freaking billion dollar market in the skin industry? Because isn't there, there's not actually a cure for redness, right? There's just things that you have to kind of do to, like, mediate it. I mean, truly, that's the way for anything. There's not a cure for acne. There's mm -hmm. not a cure for pigment, for melasma. There's just ways to mediate them and to make them minimized as much as possible. There's always something that you're going to have to be doing at some point. Mm -hmm. But you can get it to such a low maintenance, maintainable point, generally, for the most part, um, that it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. But nothing is curable. Yeah. So that means stop tanning your effing face. I'm trying to like stop that <laughs> a lady today. We'll see how that goes. So, um, stay all right. Stay on brand. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> stay, on, stay on brand. I know, right? Um, let's see. So let's talk about affordable brands. So mm -hmm. for me, 
I'm at a point in my life, I'm in my later 20s, where I, you know, I'm going to splurge on my skincare. Yeah. My house looks like a freaking Sephora. Mm -hmm. I have skin products coming out the wazoo. Mm -hmm. I have them in my bathroom. I have them in my linen closet, in my purse. I have them everywhere. My friends literally come to me and are like, oh, they just literally, they, it's like they start trying shit on. They mm -hmm. love it. They're like, oh, I know Mariah's got it. Let's go over there. Um, so a girl that's not, you know, not financially ready or able to splurge necessarily. Mm -hmm. What are affordable brands you guys would recommend? And then what are their items that you say you should splurge on? Because in my opinion, and I know I talked to you guys about this, I feel like it's better for them to buy things that are going to work, even if it's not necessarily the best brand, but things that are, you know, yeah. Don't go buy three crappy products when you could have bought one product that's going to benefit you more. And I feel like young girls make that mistake all the time. They just keep buying all these different lotions and serums and they try to take the cheap route. Yeah. When you could have, you know, bought one skincare line and whatever. It's always trial and error. And on, like before I became an esthetician, went to school for skin, I know the fresh because if someone's trying to treat something specific, like for me I had acne and it is so trying to navigate, like correct information like it's all marketing even the stuff that looks like data is marketing and they're just like really trying to confuse you so that you'll buy their stuff so mm -hmm. I like I effed myself up going to Sephora buying all those things using the Clarisonic brushes um, until I went to an esthetician myself so for uh, I don't want to recommend anything that's like truly cheap like I don't even want to well, say so ordinary, what, but what would you say stay away well, from them? yeah well my general idea for like what is good for skincare I say that there are things that you should invest in and things that don't need to be investment products like mm -hmm. the bookends of your routine the cleanser sometimes moisturizer the SPF those can be those just inherently are simple formulations. They don't need to be terribly elegant to be effective. So you don't like, need a hundred dollar SPF. Yeah, so you don't need to have like the best neon brand cleanse, name brand cleanser. Um, you can just get something that's just more general, just one that's good for your skin type. So if you're oily, something that's a gel to a foam. If you're dry, something that's more of a milky, mm -hmm. something along those lines. Milky? Oh my god, you're... I need a milky cleanser. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can do good with a gel foam. Okay, I, well, quick question. You've done my skin and you've yeah. done my... What kind of skin would you say I have? Combination? I would say that you're normal to oily. See, and I was sitting over here thinking I was dry. Okay. But you're not Hello. really dry. Because you have a good natural oil flow. Yeah. You're a little dehydrated, which there is a difference between oil and dehydration. Water. I know, guys. I should drink water. I'm sorry. But just to, like, finalize what I guess would be my suggestion, I would just say your bookends. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be huge investments, but the things that you want to actually change your skin, like your serums, the mm -hmm. ones that are going to be, like, correcting your pigment or your acne potentially even. Uh, or whatever your concern is, anti-aging, those are the ones that you need, you need to have an elegant formulation in. And if I had someone come in and they were like, I don't have the money to be doing these treatments, I would rather give them like a bomb skincare routine to do after yeah. and then wait until they have the coins to come in mm -hmm. for treatments. Well, and here's the thing. I think we should talk about that too because we're, we're talking about like... Um, you know, like skin do's and don'ts and stuff like that. What about like Amazon skincare and all this other stuff? Because oh, to me, I think maybe just coming with age though, mm -hmm. I would rather, I'm always like, I'd rather pay to have something done right. Yeah. You know? And so have you guys ever seen somebody really mess their, their skin up and then you're like, if you had just done, like save your money and go get this done, mm -hmm. you know, instead of spending all, like all this money, like, I just don't think they realize, like, all this, like, when I was younger, I did it all the time. I, if, I, if I felt like I was breaking out, I'm going to go buy a new face wash or a new lotion or a new this or a new I that. I went tanning and, 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 try, and, try to, and try to fix it, whereas it's like, okay, why don't you go see a professional, see what's wrong with your mm -hmm. skin, and save yourself the money. It actually probably equals that. You probably end up saving money. For real. Because for me, I feel like when I, when I splurge on a skincare product, it's usually it's like, well, I, I, have, I buy things at work. So I don't need to keep buying things at CVS or mm -hmm. at Walgreens or Target that don't work mm -hmm. because I, I don't have that issue. You know what I mean? I have found things that, like, you know, work. So um, what about these light masks and stuff or, you know, what do you guys think? 
What about that weird wand that I have that like electro? Like <laughs> so the high frequency works. Mm -hmm. That's that's a real thing that gives you ozone. It kills bacteria. It's good for if you're breaking out. LED masks. If they're legit, they work as well. I use LED therapy with my hydrofacial treatments. They are also legit. They can help with killing acne bacteria. They can help with anti-aging, decreasing inflammation. However, buying things on Amazon in general, you're really truly buying from Alibaba or somewhere. Like it's really? just oh yeah. If you look at what's on Alibaba, it is like basically Amazon, but for ten percent of the price. That's crazy. Um, and that's the same as skincare. So when you're buying skincare, it's probably fake unless you can see that the retailer is the actual um, brand. So when it says like fulfilled by other or like whatever. Yeah, it's probably fake. Wow. Because there's the name huge... brand uh, skincare lines that are fake that are being sold on Amazon. Like mm -hmm. there's fake skin suitables being sold on Absolutely. Amazon right now. See, that's why I don't really go buy skin stuff on Amazon. I usually get it from like, you know, somewhere like you guys yeah. or like. I mean, Sephora and something like that. But. The black market's real. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe that, 100%. Sometimes I consider selling my kidney on the black market because... <laughs> Who needs it? I mean, I have two, and I don't really drink anyway, so what's mm -hmm. the point? You know, I guess my skin would be more congested. What is the, I don't even know what your fucking kidney does. I honestly... Whatever, who cares about that? <laughs> but, um, all right, so I think that we've kind of covered any skin faux pas, right? What do you think we've covered all that? Oh, and we'll talk about Botox, but we're going to talk about that on the next. Mm -hmm. Because I think that they need to understand that Botox is so preventative. And that no serum, in my opinion, no serum is going to bump that line out. Well, I guess we're into Botox. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, no, but, you know, like to, at least. I also... And guys, I know this is one of our less ratchet episodes. But I wanted to bring these very esteemed and... Uh, <laughs> These very esteemed ladies on to talk to you guys about, you know, actually, let's go around and talk about how old you guys are real quick. So I'm 28, Jess. I'm 31. Tanya, I'm 35. I'm 41. Sorrel looks like she's 25. Sorrel <laughs> she looks younger than all of us. But I just gave her a hydrofacial today. She so did. So she's <laughs> looking very, very hydrated. Um, so what would, I want to talk about, like, the advice that you guys would give your, like, your 20, your girls in their 20s. Because... We're sitting here talking to people who, I mean, I'm starting my own business, I'm educated, I did take the semester off school, but like, I'm educated, I'm, I'm, I work for myself, like, I'm, I'm basically my own boss. You guys are obviously in, in like, esteemed career fields, you guys obviously love what you do, so what would you give, like, what advice would you give to girls that are, like, kind of stuck, or, you know, don't know what they want to do, or, you know, and I'm talking about any kind of advice, the biggest, like, piece of advice you guys would give yourself, you know, ten years ago, five years ago, whatever. One, like what you posted on your story, he doesn't deserve you. They really so, fucking don't, guys. If I look at any of my exes, thank God I'm not with any of them for sure. So always prioritize yourself. Mm -hmm. Whether that's your career, if you even know what you want to do yet. Whether that's school or just like making money. Whatever it is, don't put them too high. Like just mm -hmm. always prioritize yourself. The right one will come. Don't you worry. And then wear a SPF. Start moisturizing like it. I wish it could up see. to you, girl. I promise you will see it. Like just, just start now. We're literally fucking begging you. I'm yeah. begging you right now. I wish you could see how serious Jess's face is right now. Like she's talking. She's Does serious about the boys. Yes, please. She's serious about the boys, but she's really fucking serious about the sunblock. Like you bitches need to stop it, okay? Because I was her. I was like, oh, whatever. But I'm tan now. Yeah. And tan guess what? So you're gonna look like a, you're gonna look like a leather handbag, all right, from Kate Spade when you're 27, and you're gonna be like, I don't know why my concealer is getting stuck in all these wrinkles. Well. Exactly. I know why. That's why. We you know, know why. Me. And guess what? Your fellow estheticians, you're going to be in Target, you know, in the cheap skincare aisle, and some estheticians are going to walk by you and go, hmm, she didn't wear sunblock. That's why her concealer's all stuck in her crow's feet, and you you wonder why you look all crepey and stuff. Um, all right, 90% about... of aging is preventable. So yeah. I'm just going to put that there, and 90% of that is the sun, my friend. So They need to come do what I did, I'm gonna, and then I'm going to come what? to you guys. They need to come do what you did to me. So I went and saw Jess for my first hydrofacial, and she took a picture of my skin, and then she toggled it back and forth and said, this is what you're going to look like at 80. And we just <laughs> zoomed it back and forth, zoomed it back and forth. And I was like, wow. And then she was like, oh, and this is your sun damage. And let me tell you guys, I almost shit my pants, okay? 
It was absolutely horrifying, but I think they need to be scared. They're cute sun freckles when you're young, but they're yeah. like age spots. Like, they they're, they're, the same they're not. Thing. Yeah. It's wait till you damage, girl. wait till you hit my age and you're just like, you know what? I don't think that's a freckle. I think that's an age spot. And wait till they start popping up exactly. all over your body. Okay? Because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that's happening to me because I'm not. Oh my not, chest. For I sure. am not about to sound decrepit. However, <laughs> comma, wait till you, and you know when it really comes out when you put self tanner on. Put, put your self tanner on. Start really looking at those freckles, girlfriend. They're not freckles. But do that They're before the tanning beds. Yeah. They're age spots, just so you know. <laughs> All right, Tanya, advice to girls in our 20s. Um, well, I guess I have two pieces of advice. Um, as far as skincare goes, invest in medical-grade skincare. Because yes, that's girl. one of the big things that we promote of me. Um, you know, there's skincare from Sephora, from Blue Mercury, where people, you know, they, pe brands claim that, you know, these products do one thing and this other thing, but medical grade skincare actually has research behind it, um, clinical trials. So, proof. Um, yeah, proof. You know. Science. Exactly. Yeah, so, we do invest all in medical grade skincare. Um, which we sell it of me. And then, <laughs> which we sell it of me. Plug, plug, plug. And, then, <laughs> and then the other piece of advice would be um, invest in yourself. Like, don't, um, you know, if something's bothering you, you know, just like go ahead and fix it. Don't don't worry about um, what other people think. What other people think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like even if it's expensive, like save up your money and do it. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yes, yeah, save money. Yeah, I'm still trying to do that. I'm figuring it out slowly. All right, how about you? So, with regard to skincare, I would say for my brown girls, mm -hmm. wear sunscreen. So I'm going yeah. back on Jess's uh, mm -hmm. sunscreen tra train, excuse me. But you know, a lot of brown people, people of color, really they probably don't think about it really. Yeah. Well, because we have you natural sun angle. protection, mm -hmm. but and so we don't have the propensity for skin cancer in the same ways. Um, and for photo aging globally, right? We were talking earlier about how black doesn't crack. It but really don't. It really don't. I'm looking right at it right now. It really <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't crack, but it creases, right? It doesn't yeah. crease. It don't <laughs> crack, but it will crease, ladies. 100%. And so, but the, one of the things that is a major issue for women of color is pigment. And right? melasma and stuff like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So pigment of all sorts, Which right? somehow I got, so I want to understand how I'm white, and I also got melasma, so I feel like I'm getting like... You just got all the best things in the back. Right? Maybe. And rosacea? Cool. Fuck <laughs> me, right? Hey, you're white, and you will crack, and you you're also have rosacea. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Continue. But yeah, hyperpigmentation is mm -hmm. an issue, and the sun is always going to worsen that, right? Mm -hmm. So at very base level, if you're dealing with any hyperpigmentation issues, then that's going to be a focus as well as just photo aging. So it's interesting. Uh, women of color tend not to photo age as much as Caucasian women like across their face, but around the eyes tend to have a much bigger issue. That's so weird. Isn't it? Probably because it's more delicate skin, right? Mm -hmm. Much more delicate more than... skin, right? And so that's a reason also to oh. use sunscreen regularly. Let's talk about that real quick before we get into like the juicy, juicy shit. Oh, about my skin. Skin. oh yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Actually do that and then, because I was going to say with the eye thing. Yeah. Girls, when they're taking their makeup off, they are rubbing their mm -hmm. mascara and they don't realize how delicate that skin is. Wait, I'm literally holding my mic right now. Wait until you're 25 and you're like, why does my face look like this? Because you were scrubbing. You were scrubbing, Rebecca, and we told you not to scrub. That's why. All right, stop it. Be delicate with your eye skin, okay? I want you to think about, like, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say, like, this ball sack. I was going to be like, think about how delicate that skin is, okay? That. All right, treat the that. Reference. Actually, we well, don't care about that. Other percent of berries that other, we might other think, Treat it like you would treat your lady region, okay? You be delicate with it. Don't scrub it, okay? It's very good. Okay, <laughs> okay very whatever you're... Kimberly, don't fucking scrub it. All right, Sorrel, continue. Sorry, I get really ups upset about that. I can see you're passionate. I'm very passionate. <laughs> uh, my second piece of advice is just my personal motto, which is be scared, do it anyway. Yes. In your 20s, you really have nothing but time. So be prepared, be, you know, do your research, be smart, but do it. Whatever is on your mind, whatever is on your heart, whatever it is that you're motivated to, do it. Why yeah. not? Mm -hmm. You don't want any regrets as you get older. You really don't. And I think we really need, you know, uh, we got to hit on boys. And we're going to hit on it because how many times have you been out? And you see some girl crying over some guy named Todd. That was okay. Before. And you know what? It's true because when I was when I was 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, I would listen to girls. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I like when I would when I would see girls like 
like your guys' age tell me like no stop yeah i'd be like they don't know what they're talking about He's they not trying. they they've <laughs> given up on men it's fine and i'm like no i wish i would have listened and like i try to tell girls now but i think i do it in a funny way where they're like you know what i might just listen to her like maybe i will but like please guys they are not fucking worth it. Stop no. sitting around stressing about Todd, okay? Because his dick Brandon. game is not strong. I don't care what, yeah, what'd you say? Brandon. I feel like it's Todd, Brandon. Todd, Brandon, Terrell, Tyrese. I don't care what his fucking name is. I don't care what color he is. I don't care if he's fucking purple, okay? His dick game is not that strong. And at the end of the day, it is. even it if it is. is, even if it is, you call me, I will tell you how to do it better yourself, okay? I promise you. I'll tell you how to do it better yourself. And I'm sure they agree with me. Like, and. I think there's this weird thing in their head. Um, okay, real quick, who's married here? I am. You're married? When did you get married? Ten years. Ago. Ten years? And you're what? going strong, right? Going strong. And then, Tanya, how old are you again? 35. All right, and then... 31. And you guys are not married? No. Do you feel bad about not being married? Not at all. Are you glad that you haven't gotten married yet? Yeah, I'm glad I waited. For See? Sure. Thank you. Okay, they needed to hear that because I feel like girls, and I, it was me too, like a couple years ago, I'd be like, oh my god, what if, I, what if I'm 30 and I'm not married? Who gives a shit? I honestly hope, at this point, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be married by 30 and I don't care. I think, girls, you got to stop thinking once you hit 30 that your life's like over. You're not. You're still sexual. I have to cough. You're still, I was like, like I'm not crying, guys. You're still a sexual woman. I'm still a lady. I am not a cougar. Um, you're still sexual. You're still a woman. However, this all loops back to skincare, okay? Because if you don't want to feel like your life ends at 30, well, guess what, bitch? Start wearing some fucking SPF, and then you yes. wouldn't feel like that. But, I mean... It's some retinol. I, I mean, <laughs> it, do you think it's good, like, that you guys, like... I mean, well, you you, you, you met your person, you're happy, so we're all like, that's great. Yeah, but I didn't get married until I was 31. <sighs> See, fucking snaps. Snaps aces to these bitches, please, because you girls got to understand, there's... I feel like... When I was younger, I was like, I, actually, I dated a guy when I was in the Air Force, and he was like, we broke up when I was 22. He was like, if you don't marry me, you're going to be 30 and single. And I'm like, okay, fuck you. Guess yeah, what? I Guess who tried to get me back, first of all? <laughs> all day. And second of all, I, like, I look around now. This is what I'm scared of, though, okay? What I'm scared of is I'm like, all right. I lay in bed at night, right? I got a TV in my room. I got my memory foam mattress. I got my bamboo sheets and my silk pillowcases. And I'm eating a bowl of cereal, and I'm just, like, watching Will and Grace for, like, the 14th time, and I'm so content with my life that I'm like, maybe I'm too content. Like, maybe this is what my life looks like for the next 60 years, except that I'll have at some point move to Boca and just be doing the same thing that I'm doing now. But I feel like that you gotta, I mean, what, to, what age would you guys say that you got to that point where, like, I'm no, did you feel stressed out about that in your 20s? Like, at what point did it change? Sorrel's like, just always had the answer. She's shaking her head. She's like, no, nah, I already knew. I know. <laughs> no, I wasn't stressed at all. Like, I feel like my 20s was the time to live. Mm -hmm. I was not interested in being tied down. I met my husband at 28, and honestly, even now, I'm like, I could have pushed it. Like, I could have pushed, pushed it. it. I could have pushed, pushed it. it. Yeah. Awesome. But no, like, that is, you never get that time back. And it's yeah. the freest yes. time. I was childless. I was living mm -hmm. in New York. You know, the world was my oyster. It yeah. was amazing. I would never, ever, ever take that time back. And I wouldn't have wanted to be coupled or, mm -hmm. like, not hampered down. Because being coupled is a beautiful thing mm -hmm. as well. But there's a time and You place. learn from it. But I think what makes me sad is I see girls in relationships where they're not happy. And... They'll stay in them for years. That was me. I was the serial monogamous. And when I look back, I just like, I wasted so much on this disgusting idiot. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, you're blind when you're in love. You're like, oh, this asshole's great for me. I but if you can just get out of it. And I feel like girls are like, oh, well, I've invested so much time. Who gives a shit? And it, I mean, for me, I'm, I mean, I am like, I'm not a cheater, but I also, my relationships <laughs> run, run a little bit short sometimes. Over like, I think the longest, no, 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 I think like, but it's just like, I've never been in a relationship like longer than a year, mm -hmm. but I think if I had to tell myself something in my earlier twenties, I'd be like, bro, stop fucking making excuses for him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And not even just for men, but women, friendships. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have friends that you were friends with in your early twenties and you guys grew up and you grew apart? And, mm -hmm. Absolutely. and I think that people need to stop. I mean, be forgiving. I think being forgiving is a, a trait of the, like the, like the strong minded and like, yeah. you know, if you're, you're a strong person, if you can forgive, 
But just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean you need to let them back in your life. Yeah. You don't, like, people know what they're doing. And I had a girl ask me this at the club the other night. She was like, I want my friend to, like, set boundaries, and I don't know how to help her. And I said, listen, I'm sure you guys have been there. You can't tell your friends anything until they're ready to listen, until they're really ready to hear it. Like, if, if you know, Bailey is in love with Jacob and she doesn't care that he's cheating on her and, you know, whatever, and his dick game's not strong. In every scenario, I always say the guy's dick game's not strong. <laughs> I don't care what it is. But Bailey's not going to leave. Until she's really fed up and she has to level up mentally for that, right? Did you guys go through that? Did you lose friends and stuff or, you know? Yeah, friend breakups. Friend breakups hurt worse, yeah. man. They really do. Yeah. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Any other advice that you guys have for them? I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, we should tell them about my photo facial. And kind of oh, like the yeah. benefits about photo facials and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, I did Mariah's photo facial yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so, basically, a photo facial is basically um, otherwise known as uh, uh, broadband light therapy. So, it's basically light therapy that's being pulsed into your skin at varying wavelengths. And because they're varying wavelengths, they're able to penetrate the skin at different layers. And those different layers house... Um, structures called melanin, which create darker pigment, and then they house uh, structures called hemoglobin, which uh, create the red pigment. And then all the layers are, you know, made up of little cells that um, express your DNA and your RNA. And so basically broadband light therapy is able to zap the dark pigment um, and the red pigment um, to give you a more even uh, skin tone, and then it's also able to um, affect the cells on uh, like a molecular level to actually improve um, mutations and to uh, make your skin act in a more youthful way. I feel like seven years younger and I just got my first one done yesterday. I just want to point that out. So, you know, I have a new lease on life, guys, because I, you know, I'm not aging like the rest of y'all. Um, so, cool, oh, my bad. No, 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 go ahead. There was this cool study that I always kind of throw out there about BBLs, the broadband lights. Mm -hmm. It's done by this guy named Dr. Not, Peter. not butt, boob, whatever the else. Not, yeah, not, <laughs> not really going butt lift, but hey, if you want We'll get to that one on the next too. episode, don't yeah. worry. Um, so it's a 10 year study mm -hmm. done by Dr. Bitter. He had this whole group of people for 10 years. He had them do a minimum of two BBLs broadband lights, mm -hmm. uh, a year for 10 years. And the before and after photos, the, po the photos after the 10 years, they look younger than when they started. No. After I saw that, I was like, I'm doing photo facials. That happened to me. When I got out of the Air Force, that happened to me. I actually started doing, like, skincare and, like, mm -hmm. you know, I started Botox and things like that. And, you know, like I said, we'll get into that the next episode. But I look younger now than I did in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, now than I did like, some, time. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing, I girls. Think. You should not be scared of aging. Just age properly because yeah. guess what? Take care. Well, if for us, when we were in our early 20s, okay, that was when people were overplucking their eyebrows oh. and we didn't know how to do makeup and Instagram was brand new and now all these bitches have TikTok and they're like, hey guys, this is how you do like a laminated brow at home and you know, we <laughs> fuck you guys. For that. I'm going to say that, all right? I am a little salty. Fuck you guys. Because you didn't go through the awkward shit in your 20s like I did in my I early 20s. bronzer on my whole face. Yeah, bronzer on our whole entire face. Whole face. Foundation <laughs> doesn't match the neck. Like, like it's like that video I sent you on Instagram, just the girl that's like, oh, hey yeah. Kyle. Like, but anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to us. Listen, we're just trying to help you. And if you don't want to listen, I can't, I can't fucking help you. So obviously you can follow me at Mariah Malabuji on Instagram. Um, guys, you want to give them your Instagrams? Yes, mine is Jessica Aesthetica underscore on Instagram. And I follow her, so if you, you know, have a hard time, whatever, you can go Jessica. to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, go ahead, guys. Whatever you want to share, it doesn't matter. Uh, mine is It's Tanya Anya. Oh, I like All that. A's and Tanya. All A's and Tanya. <laughs> and then, go ahead, Sorrel. And I'm the Glow Up Genie. Okay, and then what, um, what, do you want to tell them where you guys are at, where you guys are located? So if they wanted to, if you're in the DMV, this is where they're at. Yeah, so we're in the DMV area. We are the only of me location in the moment um, in Bethesda. However, one should be opening at the end of the year in the Tyson's area. Who knows what's to come? 4921 Elm Street. <laughs> yeah, um, I love it there. Yeah, uh, so listen, guys, um, stay out the streets, girl. Go get a good fucking moisturizer. Um, get some serums. Don't um, listen to Instagram stop, and TikTok. Yeah, don't listen to Instagram and TikTok. Please Use stop, retinol. Yes, please stop putting fucking coconut oil on your face. Okay. And wash your face before you go to bed. 
Oh, yes, please. Don't, like, listen, what? you are not that... Listen, Kimberly, you're not the one girl in the world who can get away with sleeping with makeup on, okay? Yeah. Stop. You're not special. You need to wash your face like the rest of us, okay? You have to suffer just like the rest of us, mm -hmm. all right? So, love you guys. Bye.